Hello, I'm Frank Buckholz. I am the North Langley Community Director for the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is doing a candidate videos for the federal election as we did in the municipal election last fall to help voters and business people understand the issues, meet the candidates and see them. And with me is John Aldag. John is an incumbent MP for Cloverdale Langley City seeking a second term running with the Liberal Party. And welcome, John. Very thanks, uh, and Frank, and the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce for the yeah. invitation to come. And uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. You, of course, have a track record now, so you might want to talk a little bit about that and uh, about why you're running. Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, I, uh, as you've mentioned, this is my uh, the end of my first term that I've just reached, and it has been an absolute privilege serving uh, the community of uh, or the riding of Cloverdale Langley City these past four years. I ran in 2012, or is when I decided to pursue politics, and, and that led up to the 2015 election, because I was really concerned about the direction that our country was headed. Uh, things like the uh, direction that we were going on environmental policy, and immigration, and, and just the general narrative that was seeping into, uh, into Canada. And uh, so over the past four years, I've had the chance to address some of those issues. And uh, a few of the things, I, I've also had many conversations with, uh, with constituents um, prior to the 2015 election. I talked to more than 35,000 doors in the uh, riding, and I've continued to do that over the last four years. I think it's really important that we take the concerns from the riding to Ottawa. And so uh, over those conversations, some of the things that I've heard, uh, the number one issue in this riding is affordability. And so families are concerned about getting ahead. The uh, riding of Cloverdale Langley City is the second youngest in British Columbia. And so we have lots of young families, and, uh, and so we've worked on addressing their issues uh, through programs like the Canada Child Benefit. That brings $7.5 million every month tax-free into the riding to help our, our families. Uh, I was able to do a bunch of work on uh, environmental policy, um, which addresses climate change, which I, I think <coughs> is a huge issue. and. Uh, and then we, uh, we dealt with uh, taxes, we lowered uh, taxes for small business, we lowered taxes for middle class families, and, uh, and those that help with those affordability issues. We also hear a lot about transit, and I believe we're going to be talking a bit about transit later in the day, yeah, or the, uh, the, uh, the next few minutes. And, uh, and then um, other uh, issues like community safety, and so those are really the types of things that I've advocated for. And I, I believe that um, you know, I've been a great voice uh, for Langley, for, and, uh, uh, the riding of Cloverdale Lane City, and that's what I hope to do uh, following the election in 2019. Thank you very much, John. And you mentioned small business and taxation, and as you know, the uh, Minister of Finance brought down some changes which the business community have a lot of concerns about. And uh, you met with us, you met with other business organizations, you took a lot of those concerns back, and they were changed. Uh, are you satisfied with the changes that have made? Do you think that helps the small business community more now? I think that uh, there, there's been a number of uh, initiatives over the four budgets that we had, and uh, in the last budget we were able to reduce the small business tax rate from 9% to 7%. And I've heard from businesses that that's been very helpful to them. Uh, they're just starting to see those results uh, as they uh, go through this tax season. And, um, but you know, that's uh, about putting more money into the hands of small and medium businesses, which in our riding in Cloverdale, Langley City, really drive the economy here. They're so important to, uh, to this constituency. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the, the big one. Um, some of the other tax changes um, were meant to, um, to bring consistency about uh, how different uh, corporate structures were being dealt with in Canada. And so that consistency that was lacking is now in place. And I think that, that was, uh, a move that was necessary, and uh, so we're um, we're uh, we're good to go there. Uh, with um, uh, I think that moving forward with those changes um, it helps uh, grow business, and, and that ultimately helps the economy. Um, another thing that we've heard from both the BC Chamber and our own members is concerns about getting employees, and we are in a fairly tight employment situation, and uh, some of our businesses. The temporary foreign worker program, another program that bring people in for, from other countries for short, shorter periods of time, right. and they're expressing concern that there's often a lot of red tape and delays and other things. Is that something that, that you would see needs some improvement? Yes, I think that uh, we always need to pay attention to the labor market. Uh, over the last four years, we uh, saw more than a million jobs added to the Canadian economy. We've reached the lowest unemployment rate since the 1970s, and so with that 
overcome some challenges, as you say, in, in accessing a, a talented labor pool. And so uh, relying on uh, sources like the Temporary Foreign Workers Program is important. And I think being able to streamline that process, make the application process um, smooth and efficient and timely. I hear from my employers all the time saying, I need workers tomorrow. And uh, the immigration system, in order to get through all of the checks and balances for security reasons, and, uh, and the other uh, kind of processes, it does take time. But I think that you know, we've made great progress on that. More work needs to be done, and that's why I believe that another mandate uh, will support Canadians in that work that needs to happen. Okay. You mentioned that what you're hearing from your constituents a lot about is affordability. And I was very interested. You said it's the second youngest uh, riding in yes. all of Canada. No, in BC. British, British Columbia. Yes. Okay. And uh, of course, affordability, the number one thing that's challenging is housing. Federal government has brought in a national housing strategy to address housing and the whole spectrum, and has also brought in a program to assist first-time home buyers. Unfortunately, the cutoff for that is about 550,000, which doesn't affect a lot of people here because of the high cost of housing. And we also have heard a lot about the stress test and how that's keeping people from being able to get mortgages. How can you deal with those issues, and how would you deal with them if you're elected? Well, the uh, timing of the question is absolutely perfect because uh, just this morning, as uh, the first plank of our uh, platform going mm -hmm. forward, we've announced change to that program. Okay. And, uh, and so we're looking at specifically in the Metro Vancouver area and the Greater Toronto area, increasing the, the uh, limits um, for the first time home owner with buyers program up to $750,000, okay. which addresses the concern. Yeah. And, and I'm really pleased with that. That's something that my colleagues and I here in BC fought for. And I'm really pleased to see that our government has responded, as they have to many of the issues that we brought forward for British Columbia. The um, issue of the stress test, again, we were hearing issues that um, of increasing uh, um, housing prices over like year after year, and in fact, month by month, and that was keeping people out of the market. And so the stress test was brought in to try to slow that. Now, I've heard that it's been effective, and, and there was a stat that came out last week that the first time, I think, in two years, uh, the average home price in uh, the Langley's is now uh, just dip below a million dollars. We want to make sure that homeowners that have been in the home uh, ownership uh, uh, for years maintain the equity in their uh, their homes, but we don't want to uh, see that growing in a way that, uh, that it keeps our future generations, right. our kids, from getting into the market. The stress test, um, I think, uh, did it what it needed to be done, and now it's time that I believe we should um, perhaps revisit that and see uh, what tweaks may need to be made so that we can um, uh, you know, see continued uh, development happening and the expansion of housing within uh, a tight housing market. Okay, great. Well, thank you for the update on that program. I've been so busy doing interviews I haven't kept up with yeah, well, it. just came out. Appreciate that. And uh, just very quickly, because we've gone a little longer on housing, but I appreciate what you mentioned. Um, transportation, let's talk about SkyTrain in particular because that very much affects your riding groups right down Fraser Highway. Uh, there's enough funding in place right now to bring it to Fleetwood. The plan is to bring it to Langley City. It's going to take a big contribution from the federal government for that to happen. Is that something that you will be pushing for and you anticipate your party going ahead? Well, it's absolutely something that I'll be pushing on. Like I said, this is the second issue down here. We have families that are spending way too much time in their vehicles commuting. I hear families that are saying that they're away from their homes in the community up to three hours a day, and that's just not acceptable. I, I will point out that in 2015, our government committed $1.3 billion to transit improvements south of the Fraser to fund the Mayor's Council top priority, uh, which was at that time the LRT line in, uh, in Surrey. Since the... Uh, fall election, the priorities changed, and we were able to secure that funding with $650 million from the federal government going into the SkyTrain expansion to Fleetwood. Now, I am uh, of the, uh, the mind that we need to continue that line. There are efficiencies. If we can keep the project running through right to Langley City, uh, we need to have the, the uh, need um, to move our, our families uh, you know, as, as quickly as possible, and so this will be a top priority for me to uh, advocate for it. The, uh, the next contribution from the federal government to that, uh, that program. I will say our government is committed to climate change and improving uh, public transit is one of those ways that we can deal with it. And so I'd expect that we will see continued investments in public transit into the future. And I want to make sure that Cloverdale Lang City gets some of that investment. Great. One final quick question. Uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline, of course, has been a hot topic, especially in British Columbia. 
are you supportive of the expansion? I am supportive of it. And uh, people ask me, you know, we've declared a climate emergency as our government. It's like, how do these two go together? Our, our government has talked over the last uh, four years about how the economy and the environment need to go hand in hand. And I think that um, we did the right thing with this project by um, having uh, the, the project included within Canada's, Canada's uh, targets for emissions, but uh, also uh, growing the economy. And uh, we committed to have proceeds from the Trans Mountain Pipeline go into moving us a, a transition to a low carbon economy. And so it's um, taking that investment in our, our country and, uh, and, and helping move forward that transition. Thank you very much, John.